So today we are kicking things off with an incredibly important session discussing a world-leading mobile-first service that allows Ukrainian citizens to apply for and access government servicing services using digital documents in their smartphones instead of physical ones. This is a great foundation for so much that has been able to be rolled out uh, for digital government in the in the country of Ukraine. Uh, this this Ukrainian service has been largely rolled out and widely adopted while they've been at war. Joining me now on this virtual stage to dive into this topic is Slava Banik, uh, the head of the development uh, for our, of e-services at the Ministry of Digital Transformation in Ukraine, and Senator Colin Deacon, the Senator, independent senator uh, of, um, from the Canadian Senate. Senate. Slava, Senator Deacon, thank you so much for joining us here today. Uh, I'm incredibly excited to have the two of you here on this virtual stage, and we're recording this to share with everyone. I'd like to kick things off with a quick round uh, of each introductions, uh, and then uh, Mr. Vanek, you have a presentation to take us through during your presentation. The Senator and I will both turn off our cameras and leave the screen to you, uh, and then after your presentation, we'll join you back on screen. Um, so, um, so Senator, you're, you're a longtime supporter of Identity North. Thank you for that and for helping to arrange this fantastic session here today at Identity North. For those of your audience that don't know how cool the Senator is, uh, um, and aren't following you on LinkedIn, which I highly recommend, by the way, uh, the number one person that I, I follow and look to on LinkedIn. Uh, can you please, Senator, share a little bit about yourself and your team and what you're working on and then help us uh, introduce our guest. You bet, Aaron. Thank you very much for your kind words. And and uh, yeah, I, I do share a lot on LinkedIn. And so people don't have any doubts about what I think about. But for those who haven't followed, uh, I'm, I'm really focused on competition competition and delivery of government services. Uh, and you're going to hear one of the best examples of that in the, that I've ever come across to Slava Banik. Uh, I, I'm just a believer that we've got it. If you don't have an innovative government, you cannot have an innovative economy. And we need to compete globally to keep, to maintain prosperity in this country, worry about the prosperity of our grandchildren and our ability to deliver social programs. So our ability to innovate is central to the future of this country. And we're not as good at it as we need to be. Um, when I heard about Slava Benik, and I'll just quickly just well, it, it, hand it over to him. But when I heard about the DIA app from our Minister of Immigration, Sean Fraser, we happened to fly both from Halifax to Ottawa fairly often. And he said, have you heard of this DIA app? You should see it. Well, the next day, there was some uh, Ukrainian interns in, in the Senate we got an, a meeting with one of them, got a demonstration, and I was hooked. And we hired uh, Vlada Alexenko right off the bat. She was one of the interns. She stayed in Canada. And what I loved about it is they got traction. They've got, they've got adoption and half the adult population. It's intuitive. It's like any other app you'd expect. And the mastermind behind it is Slava Benik. And I'm really grateful for, for the fact that he's always been open to share the success that they are accomplishing with the rest of the world, uh, particularly with Canada. So I'll, I'll hand it over to Slava to introduce himself because he's he's phenomenal. I'm his biggest champion. Uh, thank you very much. So for this uh, really uh, really kind words, I'm even a, li a little bit shy already. Uh, but uh, the most most thing that they would like to say for the very beginning, it's uh, you know people of the country mostly not like uh, your center or you are in, because you already know something about uh, our project our dia application but uh, mostly people with the country will never request such a solution from a government and this is like the main point that they see in i've been in a lot of countries because we are working on exporting this solution and even exported this to estonia but um you know mostly uh the uh, words that i hear from the governments it's like we do not feel that our people want it and this is like the uh, worst stone that all the governments have because People will never request this because they do not have any experience of using mobile applications for public services or electronic documents because they do not live in Ukraine. They, they are not Ukrainian citizen and they have not experience of such an interaction with the government and state services. So this like uh, what just could happen in, uh, you know, in Canada when Ukrainian refugees come uh, to different entities and see that 
everything is paper uh is in paper and uh, sometimes it helps us to uh you know to, to build their uh even the conversation with different countries and to uh, i will not say in, in which one but in one of the european you know classic paper countries we had a question like that was ukrainian refugees come here started using digital documents and they then we understood that the Ukrainian application includes digital signature. So we had to implement uh, this digital signature to state portal to offer public services for Ukrainian refugees. And we've got a question, how to get this to our people? So this could help. It's long process, of course, of negotiation, but it really uh, this is the main point that I would like to say that the government have to be a leader in this position, not answering for the demand, but offer the service before demand. So just uh, Aaron say when I can uh, show my presentation. Please now. go ahead. Please go ahead okay, so, my video and uh, I'll, I'll come back afterwards. Okay, okay, I will just show, I will be brief. I hope I will be brief because uh, we've uh, did a lot of work and uh, I can uh, tell about DIA for, for hours, but I will try to be brief and do it in a couple of, uh, like uh, 10 or 20 or 15 minutes. So for now, the basic point, uh, the basic point number one, what is DIA mean in Ukraine? It means in translation, it means action. So it's great name for, uh, for, for the application with the services, but something is happened. So this why it's called DIA, but in the same time in, in Ukrainian, it it's, uh, you know, contains just one, I in the middle, and uh, it could be like uh, used uh, like uh, state and me uh, in the same time if to say use uh, different uh, uh, letters from this word. So uh, we we are already focused on the mobile application and the secret is simple. Uh, people mostly use their uh, smartphones. Uh, everyone have the smartphone in the pocket. Elder one, one year uh, smartphone, no matter people use it and it's easier to uh, deliver services and documents and everything to your people in your account, so just when they, uh, w just through the mobile application, not on the web site, web portal, when the people have just opened, when do they want to do this, but the application on the smartphone available all the time. And of course, I will explain uh, about the convenience, about the uh, economic effect and transparency, but first of all, First of all, I would like to say that it's necessary to uh, to think about user-centric approach for the government because in all the world, um, the problem is uh, alike uh, in different countries. So uh, mostly the state services, public services looks like if person needs something from state, person have to do something to get it. But uh, the uh, philosophy and the approach that we, uh, that, that we, have in Ukraine, it's like we have to be convenient for the citizen and to build the uh, user-centric country, convenient country, and etc. So basically, how it was, we we did not uh, super, we were not the super technological country. We had the problems with the registries, different separated uh, web portals, different IT systems not connected to each other, uh, people who had impact. Uh, into uh, get, given to citizen the uh, public services, etc. So it's uh, and there we had a lot of problems because the costs for supporting and administration of uh, IT systems at web portal was high. It was different technology and so even impact of the people uh, of the state officials uh, made uh, possible the having the corruption in Ukraine, etc. So we started focusing on a one-stop shop. And when you work on the uh, digital services, that's always mean that you have to develop systems of the entities, develop the registries, make them more transparent, and etc. So for now, we have already we and we uh, can call it like uh, the super app because uh, mostly applications uh, include one feature. For example, if you want to book a taxi, it's a taxi application or hotel booking application or 
uh, I don't know, social media, Instagram application or something like that. But if you have a lot of different um, different features, separated features, this is already the super app. And in Ukraine, it includes already the public services, the wallet with digital documents, the digital signature, and a lot of another thing, another things. And for now, we have already 14 uh, fully legislated digital documents available in the application. Of course, we have the web portal where is the difficult public services. So this why in application we have 25, but generally in Ukraine, we digitalized more than 120 public services. And uh, the necessary point that centers say, um, said before, we have already 19 millions of unique users of this application and, you know, the population of Ukraine is like a little bit more than 40 million. So we have not even the half of the adult population, but like 70 or 80 percent of the adult population who uses this application and will launch this in 2020. So just for three years, we've got such a huge coverage of, uh, of the audience. And um, if to speak about the audience, I have to say a couple of words about the age uh, separation, because it's always a question. When you start discussing the uh, opportunity to have the uh, mobile application for state services or any st task on the state level, everyone wants to say you that uh, this would be the solution for young people, for early adopters, and etc. But as you see, the age groups, uh, excluding 65 plus, uh, they always um, mostly uh, alike each other. So it's a huge number of any age group using this mobile application and if to say honestly the age group after 55 uh, until until the end it's like uh, about 25 percent of our audience so this is a huge number of people in even in such an uh, age who use this mobile application so it's not a question for for the young people or, or uh, for somebody else. It just, it's just a solution for everyone. And the secret is simple. You just have to make convenient and uh, relevant services for your citizen. Uh, coming back to features. So what's mean digital documents in mobile application? Does not mean that we added some extra documents that not exist uh, physically. No, it means we authenticate user into mobile application and then when we sure who is using, who is the citizen who use the mobile application, we just make the request to the registry of driver licenses or vehicle uh, registry or IDs registry or students registry. And this person just receives uh, his or her documents on onto this application. So this is like the uh, simple point. Um, registries already exist. It's uh, the task is just to build the connection to different registries and uh, make uh, people uh, to allow people uh, have their their own documents in their smart smartphone. So for now, it's like like some kind of groups of uh, documents that we have. So uh, it's ID card. Uh, in addition, it's uh, possible to use for domestic uh, services. Uh, the international or travel passport because this is the biometrical document of the person and we even have the uh, residence permits or special uh, document that works during the war driver documents COVID documents and like students id pension id or uh, or um, another document so we just cover it uh, first of all uh, different areas and before i uh, say um, a ba basic things uh, next uh, about the documents i will just add a couple of words uh, that when you change and it's necessary point that uh, should be um, taken to any country that will digitalize their documents and ser services and for all the countries this is a question of time of digitalizing so uh, the necessary point is to stop trying to reuse experience of, of offline documents so when we work it on on a digital documents we understood that we do not have to make them alike physical ones it's not has no sense anymore uh, at least uh, you know uh, the orientation of the physical documents it's not useful for the smartphone smartphone is vertical and uh, the driver license is horizontal uh, orientation uh, of this document. So we just had to to solve the main tasks for these documents, create another interfaces for them and uh, give them 
uh, new life. And the same happened with, uh, with the copies. So this, uh, why this uh, slide available? Because when we are working on the digital documents, we understood that we have to cover the question of uh, copies of the documents when you come to the banks, offices, insurance companies, I don't know, uh, hospitals, anywhere where the, where the managers have to ask you for a copy of a document. And we discussed a lot about the screenshots, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But then we understood that it no, has no sense. We just, what do we have? We have the registry with information from the document. We have digital signature of the person and we can generate the copy of a document. We can, we do not have to make this a light, even digital one. So this is the just list of necessary information from this document and we change it all the experience because when you launch something new like digital documents or copies of them or anything else, you just uh, have to re remember that you just have to create something new and not adopt something old style. And uh, when we work it on the digital documents, we didn't, uh, we wasn't focused uh, on the like digitalizing of every document that person has, because it has no sense. We just had to cover the life situation. So like imagine that person somewhere in the city or somewhere on the way on the road, and this person may need any document at that moment. That might be the driver documents when he or she drives the car. It might be the ID to uh, open the bank account or to use the train. Or if, for example, the parents traveling with the kids by train, they of course need the kids' birth certificate or their children to not to have the physical documents. So we just, uh, uh, spend some time to make a list of uh, life situations. When do people really need their documents? And we just covered these life situations by electronic documents. So this helped us to um, go to the list of the necessary documents. And of course, to uh, cover the implementation status of this uh, of these documents uh, in different entities or in the private or public sector. And of course, when you have some digital solutions uh, on a state level, like having documents, uh, having uh, opportunity to share the copy of the documents. That means that you can help business to grow up. And in Ukraine, we have very modern banking systems and banking applications. So for example, you can see this information of this on the screen. Uh, in Ukraine, when uh, you, you can open the bank account just after the loading the banking application. And of course, they need your passport, your text number to open this account to you. So, and we have integration with all the banking uh, systems in Ukraine and they can request uh, you to share the, by your view, of course, the copy of your documents to, to their system. And the, the best results in opening the banking account in Ukraine is like one minute and 34 seconds. And as I expect, this might be the fastest opening the banking account in the world ever. Uh, so, and this is like the opportunity that we can give, uh, not just for bank sector, but this is like ju just one of the examples. And uh, uh, you see the uh, areas where people in Ukraine can use the digital documents. And, uh, but the most necessary point in the top of the slide, that means full legislation. Uh, one of the uh, secrets, how, um, how was our success? to implement digital documents into lives and to, to how to implement so private and uh, public sector for working with them is legislation of these documents. So digital documents in Ukraine is an option for the people, but mandatory for the companies and entities. So it's mean uh, uh, that for example, uh, any citizen of Ukraine can download and use digital documents or cannot do this, it's up to that person. But any company, any state entity, office for public services, social uh, assistance office or any another place, uh, if somebody comes with digital documents, have to work with them. So it's help, it helps us to fix this. Uh, in legislation and uh, all the documents in Ukraine have the same weight as all the digital documents in Ukraine have the same weight as the physical ones. And uh, it's mean that, for example, if somebody rejects your digital document, you even call the police. 
And this helped us people to rely on the application to be sure that that document that available for people could be used in any moment of their life in any need that they need. And uh, you see on the screen the number of partners. So we covered like all the uh, delivery systems, almost all the banks in Ukraine, huge number of hospitals, uh, all the administrative service centers, a uh, huge number of real estate, retail when people have to confirm their age and etc, etc, etc. So honestly, uh, it's really difficult to find in Ukraine where the people cannot use their digital document. And uh, but not all the digital documents uh, in our focus, we work uh, on the services in the smartphone. I will not stop deeply uh, here on this point. But I would like to say that uh the public services should be convenient always should be convenient uh in a mobile application and we usually work on, on simplifying it because we have the connections to the registries and for example when person want to apply through our application to any public service of course we do not have to ask the name or the passport data or tax data or kids data of this person of course or if for example the uh, application form requires to have uh uh, the uh, property information uh, from this person. We do not have to ask this information from the person. We can refill this information because we have already the record information in the registry about it. So uh, making convenient uh, services and user-centric services in the country not mean just having the digital documents, of course. This means that you have to uh, care and so work deeply onto any service uh, that you have to make it more simple. And even we do not use the descriptions from the uh, original application forms because all the descriptions of the original paper application forms in the world difficult to, to be understandable. And uh, this why this why we even rewrite the text there. And uh, of course, uh, and I know that this is the, uh, one of the biggest challenge for Canadian side. It's like uh, having the state uh, registry, state systems, but in the same having uh, the uh, powerful, the strong, and uh, developed uh, local local services, local IT systems, local registries, and etc. And it's questions how to uh, you know how to connect each to other and to launch like general services that might be used. And uh, in Ukraine is the same, you know, we are not the federation, but we have the centralization uh, um, point in Ukraine. And it means that uh, all the Ukraine is separated on different communities and they can have their own, even own uh, registries, own systems and etc. So the, our focus is to cover uh, is to cover the uh, state level. We do not dive deeply into local services. This is like the point of uh, the local municipalities who are responsible for that. But in the same time, all the state registries, if necessary, could exchange data between, uh, have the exchange channel for exchanging data between local registries, uh, registries and state registries. And in the same time, for example, India, sometimes uh, for uh, Prefilling data or uh, giving people the opportunity to apply for some service, we have to uh, even to have the connection as for the state registry, as for the uh, local register. So, for example, if person in Ukraine wants to change the address of living, we have to have the integration with a lot of state registries, starting from property to military registry. But in the same time, the, the actual information of the uh, address of living of this person, future and previous, uh, first of all, uh, saved in the local registry. And this is just the question of the integration, but not the question of the philosophy. And uh, having the digital services in Ukraine uh, mean, of course, that uh, it's not just convenient point for the people and uh, extra you know, an extra hard work for for the government. In the same time, it saves the time for the government. And you see on the screen this huge number of many years. And this is just uh, because we made the opening the small entrepreneurship automatic. So no one reviews your application form physically. The system uh, checks everything that is needed and you just 
received this email that you are the uh, small entrepreneur in a couple of seconds after applying. So this is the huge optimization for it. This is, uh, helps you even to save money because uh, when you launch uh, electronic services, uh, this helps you to fight with the corruption, to uh, save the working hours, uh, to <clears throat> optimize the costs for supporting different portals and different IT systems. And this is the number that you see on the screen. This is the uh, savings in Ukraine just because of launching DIA. Because, of course, DIA is like the head, uh, head of uh, this train uh, of digitalization in Ukraine. But in the same time, uh, every entity has to develop, uh, make development on their side to uh, adopt this, to make more transparent, more secure, more protected, and of course, uh, more scalable for uh, making their services available for for huge number of people. And uh, a couple of words about uh, data protection and safety of the application. So first of all, as I said, uh, the philosophy of the architecture of the application means that we do not have documents of people on our side. Person logs into application and receives automatically his or her documents on his or her smartphone. That means we do not collect these documents on the side of the Ministry of Digital Transformation or somewhere else. We just have the secure, protected, encrypted connection to this registry and that's all. And uh, of course, this helps us to be sure that uh, even even that's necessary word. Even some, if somebody destroys our system, nothing can be leaked from there. But why do I uh, made a point on on the word even? That means that we use the best experience from even not just requirements from the government side, but even the best experience from a private sector on the data protection, and uh, we often uh, order uh, different penetration tests when uh, private companies uh, who are focused on the cyber security they try to uh, destroy our systems and it's not successful and in the same time we even use the best practice like bug bounty when the, for example we uh, made the copy of the application without uh, connections to the registries and uh, gave to Mm, just external company who invited the hackers from all the world uh, and these people had to find how to leak data from DIA and no one, really no one found the, any opportunity to leak data from DIA. So uh, we can ensure that even during the war, DIA is the most, one of the most secure applications in the world. And uh, just like for confirmation of the, how, uh, how the, the right way we took, and uh, Estonia, the country that for uh, like 20 years was number one in digitalization, um, decided not to develop some solution on their side by themselves. They just come to Ukraine, come to Ukraine and Ministry of Digital Transformation to our team and said that uh, they explored, they discovered all the experience that's available in the world and decided that uh, the application is the best solution this uh, idea of one-stop shop, digital signature, documents, public services, simplicity, uh, and even the user interface and the user experience are the, the best uh, in the world. So just in a couple of weeks, I think, in, uh, in the beginning of May or plus minus, there they will already enroll this application to uh, Estonian citizen. A citizen, they took uh, winter and uh, this beginning of the spring to adopt the uh, to uh, Estonian uh, registries, Estonian uh, language, and etc. But soon, Estonian people will use the same application as we as we are. So for me, that's all. I would like to see uh, my uh, um, colleagues here, Mr. Deacon, Mr. Hamilton, and uh, I would be pleased to have a conversation with you and with our guests. Where do you start, eh, Senator? Well, it, it, for me, you know, it's it, one of the most important things that Slava said was right up front when he said, you know, nobody was asking for this. Uh, I often think about one of my youngest, uh, one of my granddaughters. She didn't like ice cream and she wasn't asking for ice cream until she tried it. <laughs> and, and, you know, this, there's we've got to get political leadership on this because the Canadians choice right now in Canada is to have a, a more cumbersome, slower, more expensive access to public services than than what dia is enabling in, in ukraine and i think slava said some very important things 
getting the enabling legislation in place is as important as the technology and often more difficult than the technology. Yeah. Especially when Ukraine's already offering to share their source code with Canada. I I have to say that one of the things that I've learned over the the over a decade we've been running Identity North is that uh, it is increasingly not about the technology. That's not the problem. The problem is the barriers are not the technology. We have got great technologists in Canada, and we work with great partners around the world that can solve these technological problems. This uh, it is it really comes down to um, political will is, is a big part of it. Um, there, there's also the need to to actually you know there's a resistance to change. We've always done it this way. Um, when we spoke earlier, Mr. Benick, you you had used a line that I is stuck with me since um since um since we spoke and and you talked about the and I don't want to use I would like you to to tell us about you know this this philosophy uh about overcoming resistance to change. Do you do you, yeah. do you know the line that I'm talking about? And uh, we're talking about whether or not you should do it the way it always was or uh, or or, or setting up the, the the goal for you know how should it be best practices versus past practices yeah 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 you know in Ukraine we decided not just to uh, uh, how would how would you would like to say uh, our joke inside was not to uh, fix the cha- the chaos that we have uh, because it's not the uh, the main goal for us. We just took the best experience from from a private sector, honestly, because they're they're focused on the user experience and simplicity and etc. Because if business do not do this, business will die. So right. this is what government cannot uh, cannot do, and uh, think that it's uh, another you know another rules of this game. Like, uh, but in the same time, but in the same time, we just took the best experience from there. We just uh, made everything simple. And you know, in Ukraine, for example, uh, closing the, the business, it's one button, no <laughs> fields, uh, no difficulties or, or et cetera. But uh, uh, of course you have to be, uh, to be on this wave. And uh, you know, DIA for now have like three awards for uh, the best uh, user experience and uh, user interface. So we already uh, move forward from uh, and we <laughs> like uh, make a, some steps ahead from the private sector and from business solutions already. I love it. So I, I, I want to I want to unpack a couple of things here. So you talked a little bit about you know oh, the goals, the vision. Can you talk to us a little bit about some of the obstacles? Because I'm assuming that every bank CEO in the Ukraine was not super excited about changing the way they do business. You know, honestly, uh, it's like, uh, you know, it's like already memories, but um, in the very beginning, uh, of course, as uh, Senator said, uh, the most thing that you have to have, it's uh, the political will and uh, launching the state in a smartphone was the idea of President Zelensky at that time in 2019. And uh, when we started looking into mobile application and decided to start from a document, why it's necessary uh, to start from a document? Because it, this is a quick win. You already have the registries. You can, uh, every driver in the world, for example, know how to forget the driver document at home. And you just have give to the people quick solution with quick development. So we started looking into this area and we invited for the meeting the deputy minister of the Ministry of uh, Internal Affairs. And they come to us, listened our ideas and our minister ideas about the driver documents, like driver license, vehicle registration, cert- certificate in mobile application. And uh, that deputy minister said like, guys, this is like, this is nice idea, but we are not in the same boat with you. Uh, and that was the position of the Ministry of Internal Affairs. But of course, President, uh, even for now during the war, he is very focused on the digitalization uh, questions too. And in two weeks, we continued this, that uh, conversation on a better note, but this was really the, the reality. Uh, no one wanted to do this. And uh, uh, the situation changed like may, maybe in the half of a year or even maybe later. So in the very beginning, no one to do this. 
everything, for example, for all the entities, everything is working. You do not have to uh, do something with processes that already working. Maybe for 20 years or 30 years, old stuff, but they are working and no one wanted to help us. And uh, uh, what happened uh, and what's changed in Ukraine? First, uh, the number of people who started loving and supporting our application. So really, I, I, I would not lie to you if I say that Ukrainian people absolutely proud of uh, their application and they absolutely proud that we are the best in the world in this area. And uh, so, you know, after presentation of our application with the president, we, we've we got 1 million of users in three days. So this is a huge coverage of people. And of course, it's growing and growing and growing. And uh, uh, this was the first point. Wow. And you know, the political uh, political people, they are always look uh, for the wind. And if they see that uh, people start supporting something, uh, they are starting supporting this too. And, okay. and the second point, and the second point was we launched the uh, institutional changes in Ukraine. And uh, since uh, late 2020, in all the ministries and big entities, we have deputies on the minute on the digital transformation. So we do not digitalize, for example, the Ministry of Internal Affairs. They have their own deputy on digitalization and his team. And this is like in all the entities, Ministry of Social, Tax Office, and etc. So this helps us to make a huge job together. Minister, um, uh, Senator, I know from conversations I've had with uh, different folks working in the Canadian government that there are several times that um, we, the government has made a decision to move forward under Treasury Board, but other large ministries have said, no, we're going to go our own way. Um, and the lack of political will to actually force and, and collaborate, um, you know, is something I'm very envious of, uh, of what Mr. Benik is talking about. Well, and look at the, the fact that the, the Minister of Digital Transformation, not digital government, digital transformation, the whole economy uh, it, it, it's right, is in cabinet at a senior level, is following the directions of the, of the, the leader of the country. He's that the deputy level, president. It, so you've got somebody who has is, who is got the political commitment at the very top and an action-oriented minister right beside leading the way, best practice over past practice as a key rule. The fact that they, you know, retiring legacy tech, we build around legacy tech. <laughs> you know, so, it's it, it, the, the everything is so fundamentally different, and and I just look at the speed at which and that they've they've got the traction and the ability to iterate and add. And that is private sector level success and you do that by customer experience now senator you raise a really interesting thing there about the speed because i gotta tell you like we've had estonia and other countries that have been you know held up as world leading um uh you know uh for us to kind of look at in the past but the fact is that every one of those countries estonia especially much smaller than canada but ukraine is larger you know, we're sitting here with <laughs> yes. less than 40 million. They're more than 40 million people. And we have the money and they don't. And and they're doing it in the midst of fighting an existential war. Yeah. With yeah. Russia trying to uh, cyber attack minute by minute, I'm sure, to bring this system and every other system down. You know, every single battle they're fighting is being, is being helped by having DIA. And... So I don't know what's holding us back. I just don't get it. There's no excuses. I want to talk about something you just said there, Senator, because, um, you know, uh, Mr. Benning had taken us through some of the efficiencies gained with DIA. Uh, and I think, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a good question to ask, you know, do you think there's some of the, these are some of the expected goals for a digital government uh, uh, here in Canada? You know, what do you think, what do you envision can be accomplished here? Well, I look at the... the, uh, the one of the first slides at Slava that you put up with the flames beside it and all the problems, all the reasons why it couldn't happen. You know, we've got all of those as excuses for not acting. Over to you. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. I would like to say something before the answer. You know, during the war, during the war, DIA became the, one of the most necessary 
things in Ukraine, because when you have civil time and everything is working, working hours, offices, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but but the, uh, when you have the invasion, uh, what do you have? You have occupied territories. You cannot stay in touch anymore with the people by municipalities or something like that. You have uh, territories with active war actions on that territories. It's impossible to stay in touch with that people. And you have a lot of people who move abroad, how to stay in touch with the people from the government level, yeah? And in the same time, you have even people who move to another regions. And when you have the mobile application with documents, you can launch there that we did uh, TV and radio with actual news. You can deliver documents, services, news, and even payments for people on any territory, anywhere they are. So it's very necessary to understand that during the war, uh, they became the number one opportunity to stay in touch with people. In the same time, for example, like seven or eight million of Ukrainian people moved to Western Ukraine. And just imagine this uh, pressure for requesting the offline services. It's impossible to serve these people. And uh, DIA just solved the problem because we do not have to uh, think about the offline offices and etc. So it's necessary to understand. About the Canadian situation, it's like we all, all the countries in the world have the same problems. It's no matter what is the scale of the population, it just some, sometimes matters because for example, in Estonia, if they have like two or two and a half millions of users, users, it was easier for them to scan all the uh, birth certificates of all the people in the country because it's like smaller yeah. scale. But we didn't uh, was we we didn't do this. Uh, so what I mean, it's necessary to start with something, to start with something, and to mm, not to uh, you know you do not have to build everything from scratch. You just have to uh, develop something better on that that you have already. Uh, make it iterate, more, more iterate, better. iterate, iterate. Yeah, yeah, and move step by step. When, uh, for example, Estonia didn't took everything from Dia because it's impossible. We uh, did a lot of steps on development, but they just decided, for example, to start from the driver documents. It's simple. From the ID. It's simple and some basic features that necessary in for Estonian side. So basic features and it's like very good start for, for the country. And of course, you have to, to work on promotion and legislation and implementation processes and it's possible. But, uh, you know, one of the questions that we've really heard from Canada is like we have the provinces and they are not connected to each other. It's difficult to develop something. So, sorry, but we have different regions too and different systems. And for example, the uh, IT systems on the level of the Kyiv or another big city, it's absolutely another story that uh, the systems on the community that uh, takes together a few villages, you know? But we have to solve all these problems on the different on the different levels and to come it's doable. and take... To, it's doable. Yeah. yeah. I want to. Yeah. I'm just going to note here that I've got I've got five minutes left with you, and I want to ask some rapid yeah. fire questions because I want to answer ask a couple of quick things. This has been such a wonderful opportunity, and I want to make sure we cover off a couple of things quickly. So, um, Senator Deacon, you know this is very unfair to you, but rapid fire: How are we going to deal with the growing distrust out there for government uh, for new services and things like that? How do we factor that in? The reality is that, that uh, we've got a whole lot of challenges that we've got to deal with that way. One of them starts with, in my mind, privacy and competition law reform for the digital era. Because if we are not managing large tech platforms uh, and how they use our data sometimes against us, many times against us for their own benefit we're gonna have, we've got some we've got some big battles there so this is this is a long-term fight in terms of of how do we rebuild trust in government and in media but it's essential democracy dies uh, in darkness i love that. Um, i love that idea and I, you know it strikes me from what mr benik was saying that you know if we we start small and we iterate so if you think about the number of refugees we brought into canada uh, immigrants if we start with allowing them to 
um, hold documents on phones. And we actually find that, you know, within a few years, we're going to find that they have better access to government than most other, you know, Canadians out there. And they're going to say, how come we can't use the government the same way that, that new Canadians can? It, it, you, what is wonderful about DIA is that individuals have control and access over their data over right. their information, over their credentials. Once people understand, and I think Dayak did a survey on this, once people understand what digital identity does for them versus the, the boogeyman uh, approach that, that many have assumed, they realize that they want digital identity. They want to have that control on, over their own credentials, their own information. So it's about education, but let's just start delivering it and now try and convince everybody that they love ice cream with, before they've even tasted it. Let's actually start delivering yeah. the value. Right. And that's now, what Flava did. I love it. And so, okay, last question here. And this is a this is a tough one. And, and so let's just point out. So digital ID payroll systems developed for Afghanistan years ago contain Afghans personal biometric data, iris scans, fingerprints, the whole thing. And now Human Rights Watch is saying that these Taliban the Taliban controls these systems and the data is being used against its own people. And obviously we're watching what's happening and we're, you know, Canada stands with our friends in the Ukraine against the invasion of, of Russia. But it's worth noting that we worry about, you know, uh, creating systems now that could be misused by governments or people in control in the future. Give us your thoughts on that, Slava, and give us the bravery to step forward and, and jump into the future with you. I would like, you know, first of all, I would like to say you that uh, the most interesting point that Ukrainian people in two provinces of Canada can uh, can uh, receive the Canadian driver license after showing driver license in India. So it works for Ukrainian people, but not for Canadian people. Um, uh, <laughs> this is the reality that we honestly have there. Uh, but. Uh, uh, about uh, about your question, first of all, you know, um, having the digital solutions, uh, it's about uh, digital literacy too, not just about the task of digital literacy to explain people how it works, because, you know, honestly, three years ago, it was difficult to, Ukrainian, to, to explain Ukrainian people how work digital, but for now, they are more modern, they uh, have more questions on the security, safety, and etc., and th this is like DIA became, DIA catalyzed the launching of the interest in on the cyber, uh, even cyber protection, etc. And about truthfulness, uh, all the, if you want to launch documents or services, etc., you always have to develop the registries and the IT systems. Why, uh, why am I make a point here? Because it's always mean that you have to do the system transparently. And for example, we have the construction services in uh, our uh, India on the web portal, but not in the application. But we have the construction services, and historically, construction area is the most corrupted area in the world because somebody built something, houses, uh, not living buildings, and etc. But we made it absolutely transparent, and every action in this registry is made by personal electronic signature of the person who do this on the state level so it's impossible to do something bad with that registry and with the data and uh, this is like the requirement that, uh, that should be realized for all the systems we work with the second point is uh, for now basically for now and i think in the middle of this year uh, you know ukrainian people in india will receive the notification if any state official looks into your data in any registry. So it's not about the history, like you're applying for service or you're receiving the document into DIA, but if you do nothing and somebody looks into your data about your property, about your land or anything, you will see the notification in the mobile application that such officials from state, from special authority, his name is like one to three, looks into your data and you can go to the police or etc so you can be sure that your data is protected uh Mr. the third Manny. point yeah oh, i'm sorry I, I just I, have yeah. i just have one last point uh in the very beginning when we launched passports people started saying 
I do not know how it works and uh, maybe uh, somebody will take the fake credits for me. That was the main uh, fear for people. And what did we uh, do? We um, uh, made the uh, exchanging data with Ukrainian uh, Bureau of Credit Histories. And if it's a private company, but if any bank, credit organization, financial institution requests information about your credit history, you will yeah. ge get the notification yeah. into the application that somebody looks your, into your credit history and you can call and block this operation. I love the focus on transparency and making sure that people have the control. Senator, you raised that right at the beginning and I love the fact that you closed back with it again, Slava. I cannot thank you enough. On behalf of the entire Identity North community, I, I want to extend a huge thank you to, to you, Mr. Benik, Senator, uh, for joining us this morning. Uh, Senator, it feels like you've got a, a quick note that you want to say here. Just, just to thank you, Aaron, for giving profile to my friend Slava and the great work that is being done in Ukraine. We 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 can take such leadership from them, and thank you for bringing the platform uh, to this topic. I, I'm so thrilled, and I got to tell you, uh, uh, Sava, uh, uh, the senator and I will be on the first plane that we can into the Ukraine to to help bring other Canadians in to see how you're using it and to help support you. Uh, I love the idea, and I, I think there's a great partnership opportunity there. Thank you again for your time. Thank you. Really thank, enjoyed thank you very much.